the disturbing case of the chief of police killer is murder back right now is murder back on the menu are we are we doing murder murder right hop aboard the murder train i think like i think post uh no go back okay we're gonna do murder we're doing 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 murder you need to delete this vod it's too dangerous to keep live yeah no it's we okay here this is grant harden 48 known as a loving family man to his devoted wife linda and their 16 year old daughter Grant also had a long but tarnished history in police service. In 1990, he joined the Fayetteville, Arkansas police force as a patrolman. Oh shit, we got Arkansas and we got murder. Oh my God, dude. What's a username with a hundred gifted subs? Giving 100 people the opportunity to avoid the ads. Thank you. What's a username for the hundred gifted subs to avoid them? Okay, some of them I cannot describe to you. All right. Where he spent a year until he was fired. He then transferred to Huntsville, where he also spent a year as a You're patrolman before quitting. You're from the city? Let's go. In 1993, he transferred once more to Eureka Springs, Arkansas, where he advanced to field training officer. He stayed there until late 1996, when he was allowed to resign after falsifying a report. After almost 20 years, he then re-entered the police force and advanced to police chief in Gateway, Arkansas. At the time of his arrest, he was working at the Northwest Arkansas Community Correction Center in Fayetteville. On February 23, 2017, Hardin pulled up beside the truck of James Appleton, who was parked on Gan Ridge Road in Gateway, Arkansas, and shot him through the head. Another driver heard the shot and easily recognized Hardin, having known the other man for most of his life. After killing Appleton, Hardin... That's what happens when you do a crime in Arkansas, bro. Everybody knows each other, so they're like... Everybody's like, okay, well, yeah, that's that right there is Bo. I know him. I know everybody in the city. You know, I know everybody in the state. We're in Arkansas. That's my my cousin's uncle. Also happens to be my, you know, my brother at the same time. Literally, my family talks about this shit so much. He returned home and took his family out to dinner. Although he was visibly upset, he wouldn't tell them what was wrong. Instead, he only told his wife, just know I love you. God will take care of you. On their way home, they were stopped at a roadblock and Hardin was taken in for questioning. Right hand turned over for me. Perfect. Perfect. Thanks, sir. Okay, let me see the right back of your hand. You'll turn your hand okay. back over. Okay. Yep. Thanks, sir. I'm gonna do the same thing with the left palm. Thanks, sir. Hardin sits angled in a corner of the room his heavy breathing the first sign of his distress. The second is the nervous tick which causes his head to jerk sharply to the side. He manages to control it when Detective Chamberlain enters the room and prepares to give him a gunshot residue test. After being searched for weapons, he is allowed to use the restroom before questioning begins. You don't have GSR test, baby. Weapons on you, do you? No. Okay, let me search you real quick. If you place your hands up on the wall, I'll let you go to the bathroom, okay? There's just keys. I believe it was keys right there for you, okay? So where do you work at? And uh, Arkansas Community Corrections. Oh, okay. Okay. All righty. If you want to step right out here, I'll have that uh, other deputy take you. If you want to pick that up, you can. Bro, this is like, no wonder he's a... Hey, Brad, you might think it's the last one. Of course, that's perfect. Thanks. Wait. Sir. Appreciate it. He killed the chief of police? Wait, I thought he was the chief of police. He looks like he's the chief of police because he's like straight thumbed out. Like he's the most thummy boy I've seen. Immediately, my mind goes, okay, well, that's the chief of police. Like everybody knows this. The more thumb like you are, uh, the, the, the higher your police ranking is. It's like how uh, white people uh, derive their power from their racism. You know what I mean? The more races you are, the more power you have, the more powerful you are. In like the Ku Klux Klan, for example. He lives in Arkansas. You have to factor that in. Do, do a lot of people look like cops or thumbs in Arkansas? You can put that back in your pocket if you want, man. I just 
he, you know how it is. I know how you, you're in corrections, so you know when we take people to the bathroom, we don't want them taking stuff in there. Oh, yeah. And stuff and whatever. Not that you would, but well, you know how it, it works. Yeah. yeah. Or that you even may just forget it in there on accident, you know? Um, there was something I needed to get from you. Are you right or left handed? Right handed. Right handed, okay. Perfect. I know we have met James Chamberlain. Okay. Uh, I know, did you used to be a police officer somewhere? Or, I recognized you, but I wasn't 100% sure where I knew you from. But somebody said that you used to be a police officer in Gateway or yeah. something like that. Okay. Um, I a constable. And you were a constable here too. For Benton County? Yeah. For Benton County. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was thinking. Uh, uh, How long did you do that? Oh. Uh, Two years. Well, I, I was elected one, one term, two different terms, but not okay. together. Not together. So two on two separate occasions. Okay. Uh when they return, Chamberlain allows Hardin to take back his keys, casually chatting to establish a connection between them based on being fellow officers. This is usually done to gain trust and to get the suspect to relax and open up. A second detective enters, and she silently sits down to observe. Hardin is asked about his history in law enforcement and is forthcoming with his answers. Um, you understand this, you've been through this before, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna read it to you. Um, anytime we bring somebody into the sheriff's office, we read this before we start talking to people, okay? And it's just your statement of rights for us. And before we ask you any questions in my duty advisor of your rights, you have the right to remain silent. Do you understand that? I need to affirm it, yes or no, okay. Okay. Anything you say can be used against you in court or other proceedings? Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. Um, you have the right to consult an attorney before making any statements or answering any questions, and you may have him or her present with you during questioning. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. Um, you may have an attorney appointed to you by the court to represent you if you cannot afford one or otherwise obtain one at no cost. Do you understand that? Yes. Um, if you decide to answer questions now without a lawyer, you still have the right to stop answering questions at any time or stop uh, questioning for the purposes of consulting a lawyer. You understand that? Yes. Okay. However, you may waive your right to account. Sorry, you may waive your right to advice and counsel, and your right to remain silent. You may answer questions or make statements without consulting a lawyer if you so desire. You understand that? Yes. Okay. All I did was read this to you. I put that you said yes to all of it. If I can get you to sign, I'm oh, sorry. I'm going to get you a sign there about where I put it, find that next one signed, right here. Sorry, I know there's a lot of, there's, there's too many X's on my page. That's my bad. That's a different spot than where I, you can get your pressure name, and I'll sign the other side over there. Um, I'll get back. Okay. Uh, the date is the 23rd, February 23rd. And it is 9.17 p.m. Okay, um, here's the thing. I want to talk to you about what, what you've done today, okay? Um, can you just take me through when you woke up this morning to when you got stopped by the police out there in, in uh, what's the name of that road that you're on? I'm sorry, I'm going to drop Again, Ridge. I'm not going to say anything after I've been read those rights yet. Okay. Why, why don't you want to talk to me about your day? I don't know what's going on. I am kind of sickly <laughs> to, uh, to what I'm here for and things. Okay. So you don't want to explain what you've done today? Did you? Um, is there a reason behind that? You read me my rights, and I don't know why. And so, what was the first thing said? I have the right to remain silent. Okay. So you're telling me that you don't want to talk to me right now? I, I'm going to remain silent. Okay, cool. Hang tight right here for just a few minutes, okay?
After being given his Miranda rights, Hardin shuts down, his voice becoming monotone. When asked to recount the events of his day, he refuses, saying that he will not answer because they have read his rights and claims to feel sickly about being there. The detectives leave the room for several minutes to discuss their approach. This is also a psychological move because it gives the suspect time to worry about what is happening and what information they might have. If they are lucky, this will make him trip himself up when he answers their questions. By the way, I'm Detective Cordier. I think we've met once before. Probably so. Yeah, yeah. Back when I was on patrol. Okay, I talked to my boss. Maybe I think I was confused, or I may have confused you on what's going on here. Um, I can't tell you exactly why you're here. And you being a police officer, you, you understand that. Um, I need to rule you out as a suspect in a crime that's been committed. And that's why we got you here, is because we need to talk to you, find out where you're at. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so I, I, I don't know if I scared you at the beginning or. or Bro, this makes no sense. How the f are you like a cop and you don't understand that you are being detained and also uh, like you're being questioned for like, how are you a cop murder someone and then turn around and you're like, oh, duh, I don't know. Like it literally shows that you're just, I guess, like it doesn't take much to be a cop. I don't really understand it. Like, like this is kind of what you do, bro. This is kind of what you do. How do you not know the moves? They're doing the thing. This is how smart our Kansas cops are. It's wild to me. What? But that's why I was trying to, and I can't, you see, you see the position that I'm in. I can't tell you why you're here, but at the same time, I, I need to, I need to rule you out into something. Does that, does that make sense? Entering the room, Detective Chamberlain proceeds to explain that he can't tell Hardin why he was being questioned and tries again without success to get him to relax. Hardin remains adamant in his refusal to answer questions. As a former officer, he has to know that this is only making him look more suspicious the longer he refuses to cooperate. He also hasn't requested a lawyer, which makes the job more difficult for the detectives. Legally, they cannot force him to answer any questions, so they must proceed carefully if they're going to get any answers. Hardin is possibly stalling for time while he tries to think of a convincing story but it is more likely that he knows that there is nothing he can say that won't incriminate him or be disproven. I mean, or would you be willing to talk to me about your day knowing that I need to rule you out of something or I, I, I'm just, I'm at a loss here and I need to, I need to, I need to clear you from something. And if you didn't do anything wrong today, you have nothing to worry about. And that's kind of where we're, that's kind of where we're at. Well, Does that I, yes, I, I would have liked to, before yeah. the rights were read. So okay. not knowing what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, and you understand as a detective, we have we read those rights to everybody who comes in here. It's not just you, but when we interview, you know, kids and it's everybody. Once you come into our facility, we, we that's something we have to do. It's not something um, it's not just something we're doing for you. It, it happens to everybody that walks through this room and talks to us. Because I mean you know it's just like anything else that we do. We have to we have to cover all of our bases, and that's what we did by by reading you those rights. So we need to know. I mean, does that make sense? Like, I I don't. I know you've been a police officer for a while now, so you've got you understand, you know how 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 everything works, mm -hmm. and so I've got to rule you out as a suspect. And if I can't, you know, if I can't do that, then we're at a standstill. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so where, what happened today? Where, like, can you walk me through your day about what happened today? I have to remain silent. Okay. On that. Okay. Or, so you're telling. Right. Okay, so you're telling me that you did do something today that was that was wrong, man. <laughs> <laughs> is that? What, I mean, is that what I'm getting at? I mean. I'm just. If, silent. Okay, so you're. You just don't want to talk to me because well, what I reason? Don't, I don't understand what. You know, uh, they snatched me up out there and. Nobody told me anything. I don't understand. Okay. What? Why I couldn't be told some? What's going on? And and. Uh, okay. So did you? I guess my question is this: knowing what I just told you, okay. I guess if it was me and I was 
you know, if I was in your position, I'd be like, hey, James, I did this, I was at, or Grant, I did this, I was at, you know, here, 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 and here, and I would just be done with it, and that way you can get out of here. But at this point, like, I can't clear you from this because you could still be, potentially be a suspect. Does that make sense? Like, am I, I don't know if I'm not explaining it right or, or what is yeah, going on here. It fine. I just okay. have to, once the, once the rights have been read, I have to, uh, it says I have the right to be silent. Yes. Okay. I, I don't know, I don't even know what to, to say at this point. You realize that I'm trying to help you out here, I'm trying to get you out of here quicker, and you're just sitting here. Well, am I free to go then? No, you're not free to go. Why? Because I've got, I've got to get to the bottom of an investigation, a very serious criminal matter. Okay. Okay? And right now you're a potential suspect in that. <sighs> Does that make sense? I, I don't understand why I'm a suspect, no. Well, that's for me to know and for you to tell me why you're not a suspect. This is your time to kind of help us, help you. Okay. You tell me this. Uh, I, oh, wait, I, I do apologize just... on the front no. end. No, 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 I'm not, I'm not no. mad at you. I, I'm okay. going to yeah. exercise my right to be silent. Okay. So is... Just tell me this. I know you were a police officer before, right? You're you're a police officer in in Gravit, I mean not Gravit, but in Gateway. It's an easy yes or no. I I'm being silent. Well I can see that. Where do you live at? We can do this all night. I mean, it doesn't bother me. You're going to continue to be a suspect until I find out otherwise. Okay. I'll be back in a minute. After several attempts to get him to change his mind and make a statement, Hardin still refuses. He asks if he is free to leave, but is told that he is a potential suspect. Still feigning ignorance, he asks why he is a suspect. This is where it feels like the detective is pushing against the edges of the law by claiming that Hardin has to show why he is not a suspect. This is not true. Hardin has invoked his right to silence and is not legally obligated to answer any more questions. Normally when this happens, the suspect is either charged with a crime or is released. Possibly sensing her partner's frustration, Detective Cordero intervenes. In a gentle, friendly voice, she tells Hardin that this is the time where he needs to help them help him. She is a direct contrast to Chamberlain, who has been sharper and more aggressive with Hardin. It seems to be a classic good cop, bad cop setting, which serves to throw Hardin off balance and also to see which approach he responds to best. After once more repeating his intention to remain silent, the detectives leave. While Cordera is calm, her partner is visibly frustrated and may be having difficulty controlling himself enough to proceed with the questioning. This can be dangerous in an investigation because a lawyer can easily find a way to declare any confession during the interview inadmissible if it is gained by coercion, force, or intimidation. just not have door locks in Arkansas? What's going on? They just like let people, uh, you know, they let people that they've detained 
walk out of the room if they luckily there was someone there <laughs> like what the f is happening dude it's because he's a cop yeah i guess when you're a cop and you do a murder they're like well i mean you're supposed to do it on the job you know and if you're doing it off the job like we'll still try to defend you but like you know there's a limitation uh, not being able to talk but I, after usually after they read my rights well or you know after you read after they read me my rights i just feel like i need to be silent what do you mean well just that's they why how come nobody asked me anything or told me anything before we got here or anything not necessarily you you've been real good to me yeah well i mean i i was just taking you up here you know what i'm okay. saying i mean they asked me to bring you up here so um the detective is the one that has all that information okay. you know what i'm saying and he said he couldn't give it to me Oh, he did? Right now? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, I, I, what time do you need to be back? So that well, you know, what time do you usually really get ready for work? Uh, I, I, listen, I try and leave by 9.15. Let's see. Well, that, my head's all screwed up. Now, 9, 9.15, 9.30. So I can get there and sign in before uh, 10.45. 10.45, yeah. Oh, you got to sign in? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so you just want to get out of here is what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Uh, if, yeah. Okay. I would like to help, but I don't know what's going on. And I, it, I mean, y'all put yourself in my shoes and maybe you've been there before. It just kind of makes you sickly or you say what? scared or something. Sickly? Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm, I mean, you, you said that you, you know, didn't want to say nothing. So, yeah. and like I said, they, I would love to give you the information, but that's oh, way above my pay grade. Know. You know how that works. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, so I try to be good to you. Is he even, is the guy he's talking to like, I don't understand. Like, I'm not even a cop, actually. They just, they just put me here. They just put me here, you know? Not a big deal, whatever. You know, I'll get you what you need or whatever. So, well, okay. I just need to go if they're through. Okay. Okay, I'll let him know. Okay. Do you need anything else? Uh, no, I'm fine. Are you sure? Dude, police hate this man. With one simple trick. With one simple trick, you can basically get away with murder. Which is, one, be a cop. And two, don't answer any questions. Three, walk out of the precinct when they leave you alone. He's just like, yeah, I don't know what's going on. I need to get back home. Oh, okay. All right. Well, you have fun now. Okay, Bo? Go ahead now, Bo. Just walk out of the precinct, sir. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. You sure? <laughs> no, but, but I just, uh, I, thank you. That's it? Yeah, that's it for now. Okay, I'm just right. ready to walk on. All right. Walk on. That's you nice. want to take me back home? Or? Um, I think your wife may be coming to get oh, you or something, okay. I think. Right. You're married, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. 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 okay, yeah, I think she may be um, coming up here to get you. I'm not really sure, though. Okay. I mean, they tell me about as much as they tell you. You, I know, know, I know. you know how that is. Yeah, I know, it's just... Boy. Right? So, I mean, okay. you, you don't want to be that guy. I mean, you know, I don't want to be that guy. Yeah. But. Well, I understand what you're saying. I mean, like I said, if it's I. It's just weird. I'd like to help, but. Well, I mean, I think you can. You know. <laughs> right? Right. I mean, I think you can, but. That, I mean, you don't. You don't want to talk to me, you know, but. <laughs> Those guys, I'll, uh, I'll figure out where they, I don't know where they went, okay. but I'll figure out where they're at and let them know that you're trying to get out of here. Okay. So, and let them know that you want to help. Like, what is he even thinking? That if he just, like, feigns ignorance, like, he's just gonna... F I just don't understand. He's like, come on, just let me leave. I don't I don't know what's going on. He's like, I'm trying to help your investigation, officer. And then they're like, all right, yeah. I <laughs> he defeated us, bro. <laughs> he got us again. He got us good. Right. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you. While alone in the room, Hardin checks the doors and calls out to an officer outside. Although he knows he isn't supposed to leave, he tells the officer he has to get ready to go to work. This might seem like strange behavior under the circumstances, but it gives him an opportunity to probe someone new for information. It's worth the risk to see if someone lower on the chain of command might not know he isn't supposed to have any details or may let something slip by accident. If that was his intention, it doesn't work. The officer leaves to look for a detective. Hey, 
Yes, sir. The other calls are calling. You want to talk to me again? What's going on? I'm just ready to go. Okay. And I'm not. I'm not ready for you to go yet. So you're not going to be able to go. I've got other things that I'm doing right now. So, okay. did you need to talk to me, or did you like? What was the deal? Well, I, I just went. To, I was going to go. Oh, no, and you're I'm not going to go. Tell you that. Okay. Yeah. No, you're not. But I'm going to. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Wow, what a productive interaction that was. Hey, you're not going. So, I guess he's detained? Chamberlain returns, and once again, Harnan asks to leave. The detective denies his request, although technically, he should either charge Harnan with a crime, release him, or bring in an attorney. So I kind of got a timeline of where you were and where you weren't today. Um, I'm not, we all know what happened, okay? My thing is, is I'm trying to get your side of the story, okay? I'm, I don't want, I'm trying to think of how to, to word this delicately. I'm not trying to get you in any trouble. I'm not trying to get her in any trouble. Okay, you've got a little daughter, she's 16, who needs her parents, okay? Mm -hmm. I really want him to say, oh, I'm just trying to go home. Like, I really, I want to see how much longer he can hold out with this technique. Also, that cop, I mean, that other cop is really bad too. I know what was said at dinner time. I know, I know everything, okay? I need your side of the story, okay? I don't know if you've had a problem with this guy for a while or and this was an accident or you maliciously chased him down or, or what happened but if i don't get your side of the story i won't ever know okay you know i know i wouldn't i wouldn't be talking to you right now i wouldn't be talking to them right now so I want to give you the opportunity to tell me what led up to what happened today. And if I came across as being rude or upset or whatever earlier, I'm sorry. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm just you're, you're fine. I'm just trying to get up sure what happens or okay. what's going on. Okay. But uh, I just have to invoke my my right. Okay. So you're telling me that you don't you don't want to give me your side of the story. That's what you're telling me. That I've got to, I've got to, I've got to. This is why police unions are so devastating, okay? Because normally, if he was on the job and that was like an on the job murder or whatever, they immediately supply you with a lawyer. It's wild that he's just like con continuing to hold frame and saying like, I, you know, I plead the fifth, I plead the fifth. So clearly he understands like, you know, speaking to cops is never going to be helpful because he himself is one. But weirdly enough, he doesn't realize that the second part of that is like getting a lawyer, getting a lawyer, get a lawyer. I mean, obviously I don't want him to get one because you know, him, but also you know, that's what you're supposed to do. I put together what your wife has told what me, saying, what the crime scenes told me. I mean, what I'm saying is I have the right to remain silent. That's true. You do. I'm not saying I don't want to tell you anything or anything or help you guys or anything. I'm okay. just saying, right. I, I'm, you're saying that. He's like, <laughs> I'm not saying I don't want to help you guys. I, I really do. But also, I don't want to help you guys. I really don't. I don't want to help you guys because I'm very, very much, uh, you know, responsible for the murder. <laughs> you told me I had the right to remain silent. That's true. I did. Just because I told you you had the right to remain silent doesn't mean you have to remain I, silent. I, I, I <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Uh, apologies to you. No, that you don't I have to apologize, apologize to you. No, I you don't need to. to. I no, you don't. don't. I uh, will. I, I, it's my right to remain silent. Okay, and that, and I'm telling you, that's your right. But at the same time, if I don't, if you don't walk me through what happened and why it happened, then there's no way for me to get 
Okay, it's like this. It's like this. You're writing a book, right? You're writing a book. You got chapter one, you got chapter two and chapter three. Chapter one is What are these analogies, bro? Just be like, like why is he dancing around the issue? This is the worst cop. Best cop in Arkansas, by the way. It's so funny. They're both just so bad. What happened today? What started out today? How your day started? Chapter two is what led up to the incident. And chapter three is you telling me about what happened to lead you up to that. Because I don't have any of that information. I know you went to eat, uh, you know, out tonight. I know what you said at dinner. I know that you went to Lowe's afterwards. I know, I know everything, but I don't know what caused the incident. I, d I don't know. And if I don't know that, I I've got to assume the worst. And I don't want to assume the worst. I don't. That's not my job. That wasn't your job, right? That wasn't your job to assume the worst. Your job was to go do a job, collect what facts. What is he I mean, saying? You know what a police officer does. You know what a detective does. You've been that. I need this whole piece so I can collect it all. Because if I've only got bits and pieces, it makes you look really, really bad. Really bad. Well, I feel like no one goes to jail in Arkansas because the detectives are too stupid to get a single confession. They're literally too dumb to be cops, which is really just a low bar to begin with. You know what I mean? Also, the dude is smiling because he's like, yeah, God damn, I found, I found another one just as dumb as I am. And I don't want to do that. I don't, I don't want, I don't want you to look bad. And I don't know if you think I trying to, to trick you or, or do whatever, but if I don't collect all the, the pieces that I need, I can't get your side of the story. And that's the issue that I have. And I don't know what, I don't know what's holding you up. I don't know what's holding you up from telling me your side of the story. Do you just, you just don't want to tell me your side of the story? I'm just, I'm just silent. Uh -huh. No, I get that. I, I understand that. Like that part you've made completely clear. You've told me several times. Uh, I just, I just don't want to remain that way. Okay. I guess I'm having a hard time understanding <laughs> that. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. And I, you know what? There's no reason for you to be sorry. I think, I think later on. This guy didn't go to jail. I, I feel like <laughs> this technique is working. You're. There may be a reason for you to be sorry, but it's not right now. You talking to me and trying to get your, and me trying to pull the truth out of you is, that's no reason to be sorry. Still pressing for questions, the detective says he already knows everything that has happened and has evidence. Hardin will not budge. He apologizes several times, but will give no details about his day or any reason for his crime. The investigation is at a standstill. Do you realize that you're looking at some very, very serious charges here? No, I okay. didn't know that. Okay. Well, you are. I can tell you that much. Did I miss it? Did he ever mention what the crime is? Like, because I was cooking and I was still watching, but I was wondering, like, did I, like, I was too embarrassed to ask, but like, why hasn't he mentioned the crime yet? Or like anything? Like, this is, at this point, at this point, you have to at least be like, Cause if you, if he's just going to keep pleading the fifth, like you just got to be like, just start asking questions. Like, what did you do after you went, uh, if, after you left Lowe's, you know what I mean? And just like keep hammering on specifics so you can catch him in a lie or something. Like, what is this technique? And if it was an accident, it was an accident and that's all it was. But if you intentionally went out to hurt somebody, that's a whole nother story. It's a whole nother story. Okay. I'll let you think about it. I'm, I'll give you one more chance here in a few minutes, and I'm like, I'm not going to talk to you anymore. I'm, I'm telling you that. Well, what happened? You know what happened. I'm not going to sit here and play games with you. I'm not. I, I know. What? I know. You know. We have witnesses that put you there. The two cars that drove by. Look, man, I'm not. I, I just want to know why it happened. Okay. You realize you did it right in front of somebody. Well, no, you left. What the f is happening, dude? Bro, I know he knows the truth, but he literally could not come across like a man who does not know the truth 
more than the way he's speaking right now. Like, he literally sounds like a guy who's clueless. He's like, this is called the be an absolute dumb technique where you're just like, I know you know, and we know. We know that you know we know. That's right. The thing that may or may not have happened and you were there and there were witnesses, they placed you there and you know the thing. Come on. Is your, come on. This is the number one detective in Arkansas. And get around you, but they they physically ID'd you. Like, I don't, I, I don't, <sighs> look, man, I, I'm done telling you my side of the story. If you would. You haven't told your side of the, I want to know more about this guy. I want to hear his side of the story because he hasn't really said, he said so much yet absolutely nothing at the same time, which is incredible. He literally is just like managed to talk about book writing, talk about what this man's day looks like. This is the worst investigative uh, work I've ever seen. This is the worst interrogation I've ever seen. You like to talk to me about what happened and what, you know, what happened out there that I'm I'm fine with that. But if not, I'm I, I'm going to sleep good tonight, regardless of whether you want to talk to me and tell me what happened or not. Now he's goading him. I don't think you will. Honestly, I don't think you will. Okay, think about it for a few minutes, and I'll come back and get you. Yeah, he's like, yeah, I won't because I'm stuck in this room, apparently. I'm in purgatory. I'm in interrogation purgatory where I can't go outside of the room. I tried to ask the concierge to let me out, and they said no. You know, and I know, and we know that you know that we know. In an effort to get Harden to speak, Detective Chamberlain uses what could be considered a leading tactic by saying the whole thing may have been an accident and could be cleared up with an explanation. Both of them know this isn't true. This might have worked on someone with no police training, but Hardin knows that his only chance, however slim, is to remain silent. He's left alone with the possibility of being held all night in the hopes that it will get him to crack. Your wife's about to leave. She wanted to give you a hug before she left. Are you good with that? Bro, this is like Grand Theft, or not Grand Theft Auto, what am I saying? This is like Japanese level uh, torture for the record. This is like why they tell you if you ever get like caught doing a crime in Japan, you have to admit to it. Even if you literally were not actually doing the crime, it's better that you admit to it and they let you off rather than engage in the process. And that's why they have a 99.9% .9 conviction rate. That's not even a joke. This is like, they literally will... They have a 99% conviction rate in Japan, and that's because they literally just like straight up give you like a baby sentence. Um, if you say yes, or if you don't, they will throw you in jail like forever. All right. I told her that it was fine. I don't have any problems with it. Okay. Just yeah, come on. In. I'm sorry. I was just... What? Oh. <laughs> I thought she said we're going to YouTube. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'll be back in a few minutes. Thank you. Why does he look like he's smiling? Harden's wife, Linda, who has already been questioned, is leaving for the night. She is requested to be able to hug her husband first, and Chamberlain allows Harden to see his family. A smart move. His wife might beg him to speak, or just seeing her might be enough to get him to speed the process along in an effort to spare his family even more pain. His wife and daughter enter, and he hugs them awkwardly, telling his wife that he loves her and assuring his daughter that it would be okay. Neither one of them seems to believe him. Yeah, I need to go pee okay. if I can. Uh, that's all right. Yeah, let me, let me work it out. Okay. Do you want something to drink too? Um, some water? <laughs> that help? Yeah, I pretty have to get something. No, I don't mind. That's all right. All right, let me see if I can find somebody to take you to the bathroom. Okay, thank you. You're hey, somebody said you needed to take a bathroom break, man. Yeah, come on. All right. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it'll be like that yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, Major calls. Oh, I did want to fish my own. I ain't no 
my business, but I started to move that while ago, and I thought I better not. For you get cold? Yeah, it was just a little cold, maybe a half degree up or something. Let's see what it does there. I was afraid to touch it. So we'll, we'll see how it does. Thank you. <laughs> Why is he smiling? I feel like, does he know something we don't? Like, he's a cop, right? Maybe he knows something we don't, where it's like, if you just do this silent treatment for long enough, they let you go. <laughs> it's just like, I guess we don't know that, but like, cops know that they're like, oh man, police hate this man. It's like, if you just remain silent, you can brute force the interrogation process and, and speed run the game. You get a one free kill that way. Well, can you help me understand how I got to this point? I don't know. I don't know. Man, I remember being on patrol and running into you one night. <laughs> Help me out on a call. Back me up. Oh. Uh, it was way back in, uh, oh gosh, it's been almost, I guess almost three years now. Well. Two, two, yeah, three. Yeah, something so. like that. Yeah, something like that. But. Yeah. You guys are always good to help us help. Help me too. Yeah, absolutely. Brad, he was always right there, man. Oh, absolutely. Always. I worked on his shift, so. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. You know, he, he always had my back. But I just don't understand how we got to this point. Yeah, me neither. Yeah, well, I'm here to listen. If you're willing to talk, oh, tell I'm me. I'm just ready to go to bed. This time, Detective Cordero returns alone. Since Hardin has so far refused to speak, they might have decided to capitalize on the fact that most suspects will be less on guard with the woman. Some believe that they are safer, more understanding. Others believe as if they are inferior and woman meta, very powerful, and more easily fooled. These feelings are often subliminal, making this choice all the more effective. She immediately begins to build a rapport on them based on a shared work history. She reminisces about a time when he had supported her on the job. This may or may not have actually happened, but it successfully plants in his mind the idea that she has his back and is on his side. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Me too. Me too. And if we could do that. And clearly they shop at the same store. You just talked to me. <laughs> well, I just have to. Since you read those rights, I have to stay, I have to do the right. Well, what, the right. what's the difference? Do you know the difference? No, what's the difference between knowing what the paper says and telling, you know, especially if it clears, clears you out of everything. I mean, well, the, yeah, I, I see the way, like the way I look at it is, regardless of something happened or not, and if it did, if it was an accident, well, tell me, like, let me help, help me help you. Like, I want to know what I can do or what happened today to well, be able to explain it later. I, I don't know what happened today. I just need to. You know, people are going to have questions. Mm -hmm. Your family. Well, I have questions. Well, exactly. So. So why can't My man had his rights read to him and he thought those were orders, okay? It's like this entire time I thought, you know, when you said you have a right to remain silent, I thought you meant, you know, you shut up. We figured this out together. Well, we can, but I've been left in the dark on everything since... Well, well, the thing is, I can't. Uh, there are certain things, but you know, there are certain things I can tell you and I can't tell you. Mm -hmm. But when you start to tell me what you did today, starts to clear up things once you start telling me i can start telling you that's how it works let me help you well, thank <laughs> you have to help me first thank so you i can help yeah of course so i can figure out what happened and what you were doing today i mean i've already talked to your wife i've already talked to your daughter who's really sick. 
This is the weirdest interrogation I've ever watched on this channel. And, and we watched so many that like, you know, I'm an expert. I'm like basically Jimbo. I'm Jim Smith when it comes to interrogations, you know, the buttering and uh, buttering him up right now. No, I see that. Jimbo was washed by the end of it though. No, he wasn't. Jimbo never washed. She, she's a really good kid. Yeah. So the only step left is to talk to each other and figure out, you know, come get down to the bottom of it. What happened today? Okay. Why was today any different than every other day? But until then, we're kind of just stuck. Okay. So, you want to talk about it? Alright. Well, when I'm looking over there, I, I know I'm what looking you're looking doing. The paper. I know. <laughs> I know. And you know what it says, and I'm not here to trip you up. I mean, I'm just being straightforward with you. Okay. I just want to start from yeah. the beginning of your day and work our way down. Okay. Fill in all the spots for me so I this guy's actually seriously good. Yeah, I really thought that he was going to be worse. He's kind of crushing this interrogation. It's also incredible how easy it is. I mean, he literally is. He did the murder in broad daylight, which implies that he's not very good at like doing murders, especially for a cop, or he thought that he had his uniform on or something. Okay. But I've never seen a situation where you just like, all you got to do is, well, you told me what my rights are and I have to do it. I can understand. We can start from the very beginning. I mean, I know you probably slept in because you work nights. I mm -hmm. work nights. Trust me, I worked nights for almost four years. I understand how mm -hmm. that sleep schedule is. Yeah, sleep so so messed up. You could. Oh, absolutely. It doesn't matter if you switch the day shifts. It's also weird that he's so calm when, like, he's functionally being detained. Like, they haven't said it, but he is being detained. He can't leave. And yet he's so calm. Like, yeah, no, I love, you know, not disrupting my sleep cycle. You know, you got to get that good REM sleep. It's like, what is going on right now, bro? Like, why? Why are you so calm? Sleep's still going to be messed up for a while. I still fight it every once in a while. Did you sleep in today? Yeah, I <laughs> bet you did. You could have got to work tonight, huh? Yeah. Yeah. What time did you get up? Oh, boy. I don't even, I don't even know. I'm probably around. Oh, oh, it's working. Oh my gosh, you just cracked them. Wow, 38 minutes. And finally, the lady cracks them a little bit. Yes. Around noon. That's usually what time I got up to. I'd sleep in as long as I. Oh my gosh, she did it, dude! The the Southern Belle voice is is the most OP tool that the female meta has come out with. Straight up, you got that like, oh yes, I do. I I, I love going to sleep and staying in. It's like uh, breathy. Cracked them. Okay. Around noon. Did you get any, uh, anything done today? No. Oh, no. Oh, he realized that he's like, oh, no. Watch anything good on TV? Usually that's what I do. I'd eat and watch TV. I woke myself up a little bit. <laughs> anything good? Same old stuff. Oh, yeah? On TV. You watch the same episodes? Or, like, do you have a specific TV show you would wake up and watch? What we watched today? I can't tell if he like recognized that she's uh breaking him. She is breaking him though. I mean, he went from like, I don't want to tell you, but goddamn, you are so pretty. You are so pretty. You remind me of my daughter wife. I want to tell you all the truth, you know? I can't remember. You're looking so fertile right now. Oh my god. I would kiss you through a goddamn sheet. My channel is called Right Now TV Land. What what shows play on that like Andy Griffith and stuff oh, like yeah. that? Yeah? yeah, yeah. I think they've been playing playing a lot of mash. Oh okay. So I'm not too crazy about that. No, it's, on. <laughs> it's a little before yeah. before my time. I haven't really watched any of that. I don't even I couldn't even tell you what it was about. Yeah, it's a Korean. Oh yeah. Uh, doctors and and have a like a field hospital at the Korean War. Oh okay. Stuff. All right. 
but it's really just kind of a comedy. Oh, uh, okay. Hmm. Bro, that is old as fuck, by the way. MASH? Jesus Christ. Bro, it's not too bad. Is your wife like that? Oh, yeah, I think she'd really watch other stuff, but that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> no, <it's> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess that gets her by until something better comes on, right? Yeah. So, do you watch that today? Was that on today? <laughs> yeah. Any, any movies? Anything good? Anything else? Oh, let's see. Oh my God, he she's doing it. Oh, uh, let me see. Let me let me let me go in right now. Let me tell you all about my day. They had uh... I think the most effective technique is just like get an old person to talk about their TV. They can't shut the fuck up after that. Oh, there was that ash, and I think, and then we watch Good Smoke. Oh, okay. That's always on there. Yeah. And then. Uh... Uh, watch the Mad Max movie. Deciding to take a more roundabout approach, Cordero leads with comments about his sleep schedule. Hardin responds, so she presses a bit more, talking about his television habits and what he watched that day. This may seem inconsequential, but questions like this can help officers establish a timeline and can catch suspects in a lie. If, for instance, the show had moved to a different time slot, or if the times don't add up when describing the rest of their day. Arden becomes more comfortable and rambles on about his morning. Is it the new one or the old one? That's the old one. You know, I, I've seen the new one. They just came out with yeah. like last year. Well, it doesn't make any sense then, did it? No. Yeah, I, yeah, I didn't really. Yeah. I, I guess I should have probably started kind of with the first yeah, one. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Is it? Was it? Well, my daughter had seen that. Oh, okay. So we got her the other other one to try and get her up to speed because it just uh, didn't make any sense. It didn't. I, I couldn't tell you what was going on even if I wanted to. Well. So is the first one good too? Oh well, it's kind of a big dated, you know. Yeah. So. A bit. But, uh, so do you watch some TV? And. Uh, do you have anything good for breakfast? And some frosted flakes. Hey, that is by far my favorite scenario. I don't know. No. Oh my god, dude. Sometimes fellas, all fellas need is a woman to be like, what kind of TV do you watch? Ooh, I love Frosted Flakes too. And then they're like, I did the murder. I did the murder. I'm a murderer. I was doing the murder after my Frosted Flakes. I can't, why can't I stop saying it? No, it's it really is. Oh, <laughs> uh, really? Hey, I love Frosted Flakes. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> My kids will gripe at me because they think it's too healthy, but I love frosted flakes. What else did you do today? Anything fun? Anything? Any any chores around the house done? No. Just kind of lazy. Lazy day for you. Yeah. Just watch some TV. Bro, what are those answers? <laughs> No household, no household chores. Your wife didn't make you do anything today. Mm. Not today. Well, I made her pills up today for. Oh, does she have a lot of health problems? Yeah, she has a lot of health problems. Or, well, she got hit by that drunk driver up there between Pea Ridge and. On seventy two. Yeah, east of. Yeah. You. Kind of I remember that a little bit. In front of uh, David Mustang's old house. Mm -hmm. Or the Mustang's old place there. You know where? What? I bet you, I don't know. But, uh, you know where the guy has, the, David Henson has all those uh, homemade trailers. And he's got like a, uh, a little stagecoach and all that stuff right by the highway. Okay, though. Uh, yeah. They flew, flew her to uh, 
Washington Regional, mm -hmm. Fayetteville, and flew Madison, my daughter, to what? They didn't fly her, they took her by regular ambulance oh. to Mercy. Oh, so, okay. Man, I bet that was a rough Yeah, it was, it was pretty rough. Wow. So you made up her pills, you had to like do it by the week? Yeah. Put them all together for her? Yeah, weekly. Yeah. Oh, I couldn't imagine. She's a strong woman. She's a strong woman to get through all of that. Yeah. Absolutely. Slowly, Hardin starts to progress to actual movements. He describes organizing his wife's medication for the week and goes into a long story about how she had been hit by a drunk driver. Cordero uses this to her advantage, and instead of cutting him off, she expresses concern for Linda. This reaffirms her position as a sympathetic figure, as most people are more likely to trust an individual that seems to care about someone that is important to them. No wonder you let her watch whatever she wants on TV. <laughs> this is Detective Cordero. Deputy disciplined after pulling over school bus for daughter. Oh my God. <clears throat> Okay, you should be able to do this in Arkansas. Like, if you're a cop in Arkansas, this is like one of the many benefits. You know what I mean? Like, that's like, I thought that's kind of what cops do for the most part. They use their wee woo wee woo sirens to stop people and shit, you know? Like, that makes no sense. Be careful clicking articles about this guy. You might get spoiled. No, that's the detective, not him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't blame you on that oh, one. Oh, you're probably that late at your house, huh? Oh, I don't know. I'm the only one in my house, so I get that, that anyways. Well, sure. Yeah. So, well, at least you got a day off from household chores, so that's nice. Yeah. Did you just prep for getting ready for work tonight? Uh, just pretty much. Just yeah. lay around and be a slob there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get anything done outside today? It was so nice today. It was beautiful outside. Yeah, I know. It was like 80 degrees yeah. or more. It was amazing like, outside. How, what's the deal? I don't know. It's messing with my allergies today, though. Mine, too. That's well, part of my... Uh, well, my, my eyes have been all itchy and stuff. Oh, like yeah. Mine, too. And then when I was sitting in that car a while ago, not Brian's car, but the other one, it was all... Yeah, I think it was a dog right, yeah. car. Oh, yeah. And, uh, anyway, but... Uh, I was sitting in there like that for a little bit and uh, I started sweating and pouring me to get my eyes on the front door and I think I hopped up on uh, uh, cocaine. You know. Look at him, look at him like moving his feet like a little baby. He's he's uh, he's done. He's captivated. He's like, yeah, I got allergies. I got, I hate it. My eyes get all soggy and they get all sore when I rub on them. Also, I did a murder. Y yeah, that's right. Before you, you know, before you detained me, I was doing a murder. We all know better than that. Did you get an experience outside today at all? Not really. No? Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. I know. Did you a little bit at least get outside? Do any yard work today? Anything like that? No? Okay. Do any yard uh, work today? Let's see. Fed the chickens. Oh, did you? Mm -hmm. Fed the chickens and, and threw some seed out. Some grass seed out there in front of the front porch. Oh, yeah. Cordero's efforts are starting to pay off, as she has now gotten him to admit to going outside, which is a step forward from his earlier claim of doing nothing but watching TV. He tells her that he went out to feed the chicken and spread grass seed, which lines up with what his wife has told him in her statement. Does that take a long time? No. I've never done that before. No, I've had the dog. Uh, my dog used to be on the leash, but he runs off. Oh, he does? Cool. I have to have him on a chain. Okay. I had, he's in the house or on the chain. If Jim Smith is beaking, she's honey potting. Usually, so. And I hate that because he's a running, you know, he likes to run and stuff. But he, Al Pal, 36 months with his himbo makes you rethink some things. 36 months subscriber, dude. Shouts out to Hell Pal. Okay, let's take a look. I got to pull his, uh, I'm going to pull his chat logs for a second. Four timeouts. 36 months subscriber, four timeouts. B more like hal pal okay her wait did i did i even gender you i thought i was just you know using no gender that's right dude i got censored for sussy does that count against me maestro panda 29 months let's see how many times this person has been 18 damn it's pretty good too okay i respect that 
Damn, I got some... Once people, once the members of this community make it through the nine-month period, like, once they make it through the nine-month brain rot, they're like, they never get banned. It's very rare when someone who's like a, like a 24-month subscriber plus subscriber is, is like a bad chatter. I think I've only been timed out once for something in like 19 months. You know, yeah. you're not supposed to have dogs loose anyway, and then he just goes and goes, and yeah. who knows? He gets in all kinds of mischief, so. Uh, but, uh, so I moved him in the backyard now, but he was, uh, I had him on that post in the front yard, mm -hmm. and, and he would get to run, and then he'd scratch, his, scratch the ground up like that, and, yeah. and uh, it, he just made a big mess, big bear spot out there, so I threw some grass seed out that I bought up at, uh, I think I got a Dollar General. Oh, really? Is that pretty time consuming no. to do all that? I feel like that would be hard. Or you no. just, is it pretty simple? You, you just throw it out there. You don't have to have like a... Pour water on it. Well, if you do it right, it might be, but I just... No. Threw it out there. <laughs> I didn't know if you had to have like a, you know, one of those machines that you lay it out for you, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, like a, a spreader. Yeah, whatever, something, yeah. something like that. Yeah. And I have to well, you can, but, oh, okay. but, I just, but not necessarily. I just open the bag and threw it out there. How many chickens you got? Oh, let's see. I think I've got four hens and three roosters. Left. Oh, wow. Okay. I bet those keep you there. Yeah, I've had a lot of that. Uh, well, not really. I mean, I've been keeping them up too, but because they get out there and then the, uh, the, well, the coyotes and and raccoons and things have been getting them. Yeah. And, and uh, I'm thinking maybe a fox or two had slipped up there because somebody said they'd seen some foxes out there. Yeah. Look at and his. Notice the feet movement of our killer here. He's in quite the jovial mood, very different to the mood that he was in beforehand when talking to the other detective. This is deliberate. It's called the honeypot technique. The female detective has unleashed a barrage of interesting subjects that the killer cannot stop talking about, including chickens. But what neither of them know is that the top of the hour ad break is here. That's right, because at the top of the hour, we run a top of the hour technique, an ad break technique, I mean. And if you'd like to no longer see those ads, well then all you need to do is subscribe. That's the that's the only technique you can use against the top of the hour ad break. And you can subscribe for $5 or you can subscribe for free with a Twitch Prime. Okay. If you have an Amazon Prime account connected to your Twitch account, you get one free Prime subscription a month. And you can use that to avoid the hour, the top of the hour ad break. And, uh, and then, uh, uh, all those big, big hawks, chicken hawks, I guess, come down and get them and, and, uh, uh, Hoot owls. Oh, I've heard of that. I've never seen it happen. You ever heard what they do? Uh uh. Don't they just like fly down and grab them and <laughs> keep going? No, well, the owl, the, 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 the hawks, the, I think, well, but the, the, the owls, they get up on the, it's the middle of the night, right? Yeah. And if they're in a tree, which most of mine that have disappeared were in a tree, instead of getting in their oh, little okay. roost I have in there for them, and they, uh, so they're sitting up there, like this is the branch. Okay. Hanging onto the tree, and uh, or tree limb, and they're sleeping or whatever. But who now get up there next to them? And then if you get right up on them, and they, they just scoot over. I mean, that's yeah. stupid, okay? No, but. But uh, uh, then they're sitting. Bro, honestly, at first I thought it was working, but now I just feel like he's taking advantage. He's taking advantage of this woman uh and and using her as like a like a sounding board you know what i mean he's just like hell yeah i'll take a i'll take any opportunity to talk to a cute girl you know my wife never talks to me so i'm using this as a as my god-given right to talk to a woman you know i i haven't i haven't done that in a long time brenda uh brenda left me yeah that's right and uh them chickens they're coming home to roost you know sitting there sitting there sleeping and they just keep they just keep getting up next to them until they scoot off the end of that branch and they hit the ground and it bounces on top of them. I'm gonna be honest with you, this is a battle of wits and he's gonna win. <laughs> it just this guy will talk your ear off, dude, when when you let him go. And, what? and kill him. I know. Have it's, you seen that happen? They, I, well, my grandpa had seen it happen. Yeah. He told me about it, and then I've seen what 
looks like the ends of it, you know? Yeah. And uh, so I, anyway, uh, oh, so wow. I've had problems with that and, and uh, another buddy seen where the foxes, I mean the raccoons will get up there and they'll stick their hand through the wire uh -huh. and grab them by the neck. And, and oh. so, what did I say? Fox or raccoon? I'm raccoon. Sorry. Yeah, the raccoons and yeah. stuff. So, we've got all kinds of predators up there and stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's, a, it's pretty far. <laughs> Dude, how is she going to bring this back? Like, there's no... This has gone off the rails, bro. This has gone off the rails, dude. How is she gonna bring this back? We're out there, so I would not be surprised. Well, we have We've like talked the... about chickens for like 20 minutes, dude. Okay, we're coming to another ch moment. I think about 15 or 16 mm -hmm. chickens or whatever. And now we're down to the four hens. And really all we want is the hens. Yeah, you know, for the eggs absolutely. and stuff. But when they hatch and have babies, mm -hmm. sometimes they're, well, most of the time. They'll get the babies. Yeah, most of them, no. He talks for several minutes about his chickens, which is the most verbal he's been since the beginning of his questioning. Detective Cordero allows this, knowing that the more comfortable he is, the easier it will be to get him to answer an important question without him thinking about what he is saying. No, I'm just saying uh, you get end up with a lot of roosters, um, you know, the males, you yeah. know, so it's like, and, and you do well, things to eat them, and then, that I can't do that at my house, you know, because they're all pets, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm sure I so, completely yeah, that. So I gave some away, and then uh, some of them got the, uh, well, they just... He's like, all right, I'll listen to your stupid chicken story. Tell me you did the murder. Come on. Come on now. Start to disappear about, oh, I don't know. I mean, I'm skipping through. Call of War. Call of War. Call of War? What kind of game is that? It's just a... Oh... Uh, it's not even a... It's not a game like this. No. Really. It's just a game that has like a... Oh, uh, you'll be... Say you're... England or something like that, yeah. you know? And then you got to build up your country. Keep somebody else from attacking it. And, oh, that's cool. And cool. then move your little... It's, it sounds like a kid game, probably. No, it sounds better than the type that you play like this. Yeah, it's free. <laughs> okay. Is it one of those you have to, like, sign in and keep track of, that kind of thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's it's a good way to pass time, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, when, when you, yeah, that's basically it, yeah. Yeah, it's like, absolutely. It's like, yeah, nothing on TV, so. See yeah, just except for mash and, you know. <laughs> Since she knows from her earlier questions that he got up at noon, she asks him what time he fed the chickens to try to get a fixed timeline. He tells her he went out between one and two and then spread grass seed before going inside to play a computer game. This is helpful because if he has used any online functions, they will be able to corroborate his claim and get a more exact time frame. <laughs> we don't like that. <laughs> no, it's okay. Yeah. Well, that's cool. You got your little well, you some stuff done outside, passing time inside. What was your wife doing? She's still watching TV? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Well, what time do I go to dinner? I know that didn't y'all, mm -hmm. didn't you mention get back from dinner or come back from dinner? Mm -hmm. well, I didn't. She... Oh my God. Bro, he literally, I feel like, okay. I feel like he doesn't want to say, <clears throat> But he's like, he doesn't want to say, but he's like, but she listened to my stories about my chickens. <laughs> I told y'all that. I heard, heard man. Oh, I thought somebody had mentioned it earlier, like and, when we were still out on the road. Oh. I thought you had mentioned it to somebody whenever he had pulled mm, up. Or I something. Have, I don't yeah. Know. Uh, heck, I don't even know what time. Uh, uh, Was, what time did we get to dinner? Or what, what time did you leave the house for dinner? Mm -hmm. You remember? Mm -hmm. No. Where'd y'all go eat? Colton's. Oh, hey, that's yeah. a good place. Well, I let my daughter decide. Oh, <laughs> she's a daddy's girl. Mm -hmm. Did you eat anything good at Colton's? It's a steak. Hey, can't go wrong there, right? Right. All right. That's awesome. <laughs> well, did you, uh, did you get a chance to at least freshen up after laying all that seed down? No? Not really. Does it, if you went and did all that just like that? Well, 
Pretty much, yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Uh, Bro, this is nuts, dude. She's literally, she got him to explain his day by flirting with him. Like, and, and just, you know, getting him to talk about, yo, you get a man to talk about his cocks and his chickens, you'll get him. You'll get him to do anything. You, you've broken him down successfully. Okay? That's how it works. That's how it works. You dress so nice oh. to go lay seat down. Oh, Remember, they know each other. No, they don't. No, they don't. He, she is so good. She even got you, Chatter. No, she said you had my back on a case like three years ago or something. And and that was total fabrication. Like she said that to gain his trust and confidence. That's it. I mean, we don't know, actually. We don't know if they know each other or not. Oh, I was probably ready to go eat. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> Yeah. I told him, let's go eat. Told him, look, let's get ready and go eat somewhere in there. So, oh, yeah? Yeah. Awesome. So you didn't change or anything before you guys left? I, I'm sure I put a different shirt on, probably, yeah. Oh. <laughs> hey, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> Azam, please fix the Hassan of Eclipse Shipping Industrial Complex. Not enough new vids from them, so now I have to watch the stream. Really? Is the Hassan of Eclipse Complex not pumping out? No, it's because Daily Dose of Hassan is not pumping out. And the reason for why Daily Dose of Hassan is not pumping out clips is because apparently they, like, demonetized them. So last night, uh, I the first thing I did, the, the first thing I talked to my new YouTube account manager was literally about the uh, Daily Dose of Hassan uh, and like restoring his monetization. You benefit massively from them. Like, well, what is this? Is this an expose, dude? I literally allow people, I literally allow people to take my IP and make money off of it. Half the channels just literally straight rip it. They don't even edit shit. And you still are like, you benefit massively from them. It's literally win-win. Okay. Yeah, I, don't, I would be surprised if you got all that done. Sounding soft and a bit change. of a careerist right. to men, Hassan. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I can't do it. That's not a whole lot. I mean, it's like walking to the bathroom and back out of the In 80 degree weather? I don't know. I don't know. Well, 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 I feel pretty good. Well, at least you got some stuff done today. Fed your chicken. Yeah. So, so, when you went back inside, did you have some, like... Was there time in between you guys leaving, or did you leave pretty quickly? Bro, she's like straight up unlocking him, dude. Like an I open book. I don't remember. Just that. Uh, uh, in between uh, playing the seed and going inside and playing the game. Uh, do you remember about how, how long of a time it was before you left? Mm -hmm. yeah. No. Did you ever go back outside? I don't know. Don't remember. Uh -huh. um, did you go anywhere today? Did you ever leave the house today? Yeah, we went to. But what was that seat? No. No. I don't know. Maybe you got out and about. Sometimes I like to run errands. Is my mom and dad okay? Yeah. Yeah, that I know of. I haven't okay. talked to him, but I'm sure okay. I haven't heard anything. Yet. Did you see him today? Mm -mm. No. No. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't talked to him, but I haven't heard anything about your parents. Okay. Yeah. They, they look close to you, don't they? Yeah. yeah. When you were outside today, did you notice anything different or weird going on or hear anything that was abnormal? No. While you were outside laying the sea and stuff like that? Mm -hmm. No. Everything soon. Did you run into anybody? Anybody stop by, say hi, nothing? No? Okay. All right. He must be remembering that he's in an interrogation when he gets quiet. You know what I mean? Like, I, I feel like, cause he shuts the fuck up, but he still wants to talk, you know? And it's very strange. Like, why'd you shut the fuck up? Huh? What happened? Why are you shutting the fuck up all of a sudden? Well. I'm surprised. Did you see anybody on the road? Anything like that? It'd be so nice. I didn't know if maybe anybody was out and about. Did you see any what of your neighbors? What are you getting at? No, I'm serious. I'm just oh, 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 oh. She's like, remember when we were, I liked it more when we were talking chickens. What are you getting at, you harlot? I thought you wanted to know about my chickens. 
Okay. Yeah, he Just caught on. Yeah, he know. He know. Uh, next thing you're gonna tell me, you're a raisin bran gal that you no longer like frosted flakes. You tell me the truth now. Oh, good redirection. Hardin becomes a bit more evasive when asked what time he went to dinner. He knows that giving away too many details about the period surrounding the murder is a bad idea, so he tells her he doesn't remember, something that can't be disproved. She changes her question and asks if he saw anything unusual while he was outside. He senses a trap, not knowing if they have witnesses that might have seen him while he was working in the yard or leaving his home altogether, he decides to clam up once more. Saw you messing with the thermostat earlier. Well, I may have messed it up, but no, I don't actually, know. I didn't. Did you get it I was down? going to, but then it started changing things on it. And I, I mean, before I touched it, I thought yeah. I better leave it alone. So I asked him. Yeah, be good I took the bathroom. He, he moved it up because it was a little cold. A little cold. It still kind of feels cold, though. I'm a little chilly. I'm not gonna lie. I'm a little chilly. I'm, I'm... One more hour left until the Elden Ring network test chat. One more hour. Okay. I'm like, I'm literally sitting here just like so excited. I want to touch it. I want to kiss it. I want to smell it. I want to feel it. Were you watching the no hit run last night? No. What? I have a blanket. Wait, did Hob do a no hit run on Elden Ring yesterday already? You sound like that car guy from earlier. Yeah, no, literally. I want to do things to Elden Ring. I want to do things to Elden Ring, the video game that the car guy did the cars. Oh, oh, oh on Dark Souls. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I saw that. Yeah. If you really want to play Elden Ring, there's some DS3 DLC you haven't touched. Did he did he actually complete the no-hit run or <sighs> my strange addiction to Song Piker? What jerk off on it? In my office because I'm kind of cold natured, so do you want some more water? Yeah, we're good. Are you sure? Yeah, thank you though. No, you're welcome. Well, let me go check on their process. I'll come chit chat more. Um nothing else to do with so. well, them. Are you okay with that? Yeah, that's fine. All right. I'll be right back. Just apologize ahead of time that, hey, that no. I do this silent. I, no, I enjoy I mean, talking to you. Hey, it's okay. I like to remain silent. You don't have to explain it. Oh, okay. he's doing it again. Talking, so I'll be back. Every time he brings up that he likes to remain silent, it's like, it's a wrap. You, you've already cucked the interview more. You know what I mean? You cucked the investigation more. I don't think Linus is going to fix the commie PC if you coom in it. I have a friend who's a huge fan of yours and probably longer than me. Used to be really leftist, love your takes. Now she says that since she got older, literally less than a year, she realized that your takes are just fantasy, which isn't practical, and capitalism is much needed for peace, but still a fan of yours because you're hot. Didn't argue with her because she's at least right about the latter. What the f Yeah, the car guy is still creepier than the killer, by the way. For the record. Car guy, still creepier than this guy. And this guy killed someone. And he's a cop. Kind of sad. At least they fast forwarded through this part, dude. It takes some time to spend it, so are you sure you don't want any more water? Yeah. Okay. Do you yeah. need to go to the bathroom or anything? No, right now. Thank this is you. the hottest woman yeah, in Arkansas, so no wonder he's like, you know, captivated by her charms. Yeah. Uh, she was fed. I don't know. It's not much cold anymore. I don't know. It's the kind without the D. When people say when people say we need capitalism for peace, it just means they've never let they've never read Lenin. Are they white? No, they're red. It they're like, the little red ones. Yeah. Is it still Sudafed? I think it's, it's still Sudafed. Like it's a store brand. Anyway. Yeah, I think it's still And uh, Does it work? I, it it keeps you from being literally it's untrue. Small. You goddamn coastal <laughs> elitist. Wow. <laughs> Wow, AJ Make It Maine is uh, my Arkansas chatter, who's from the town where this happened, and has been agreeing with me every single moment until I said this is the hottest woman in Arkansas. That's it. Uh, that's I was agreeing with me up until that moment. Uh, but my eyes just weep. I've been weeping and watering and itching. And, and Capitalism and necessitates so imperialism, that, folks. When I finally broke down and just how it worked. Uh, yeah. I had that for prescription. 
Uh-huh. So it's called flow naze. Uh, is it like a nasal one? Uh, yeah. You, I'm too scared to do this. Oh, that's not a like afrin or something like that. My doctor prescribed that to me because it's yeah. safe. Well, I'm just scared oh, to do anything. Not for your nose. Or, yeah, it's well, that's a, it's just a little mist. You do it once a day and it really helps. Okay. That or uh, there's another one. Some people tell me Nasonex. But they're not like Afrin or some of those that yeah. they do damage. I mean, you know, take that when you're real bad sick, maybe before you go to bed. Yeah. But uh, I'm, st I'm still the that phone makes me anxious even thinking about it. Well, oh, mm -hmm. I just couldn't do it. Not even as a kid, I couldn't. Uh, do it. I know, but I, I mean, I understand. But that. if it if it helps, I might have to try it. I might mm -hmm. just have to suck it. But uh, that and let's see what else. I'm just ibuprofen. Yeah, it's my best friend, not an Advil, my best friend. Were you at least able to t taste your food tonight? <laughs> Realizing she may have spooked him, Cordero eases up and allows him to talk about unimportant things like allergy medication. From an outside perspective... Okay, for the record, like, I told you that she was uh, getting boring, and I'm right. It is getting kind of flavor. I'm, like, losing it at this point. I've lost the trail. I've lost, the, you know, I've lost the plot almost in its entirety. This video made me realize Jordan Peterson was right. This woman is the dragon of chaos. Do you see the crypto bros taking the fattest of L's? I downloaded all 10,000 of those ugly ass lion NFTs and turned them into a mosaic of a person right clicking. That's actually art, dude. That's actually art, dude. Hey, if you like this video, please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. <laughs>